Confused by finances, investing, estate and retirement planning? Well, we went to school so you don't have to. Welcome to Finances and with Kathy and Norma. Welcome to Finances and Unemployment during COVID-19. We went to school so you don't have to. I'm Norma and I'm here with Kathy. Today, we wanted to talk about unemployment during COVID-19, the federal pandemic unemployment compensation, individual versus self-employed options, and what to do if you need help. Yeah, we've had many questions, I know, from my own family about this over the past few weeks. So we started talking and thought we might have information that would be helpful to others as well. So we've done another episode on regular unemployment during regular times. And unemployment insurance, again, provides unemployment benefits, usually weekly, to employees who have lost their job through no fault of their own. And they have to meet other requirements, such as, you know, being at that particular job for a certain amount of time. And this is administered specifically by each state. So each state has different rules and each state has a different application process. In March of 2020, there was a federal law which changed the rules a little bit on unemployment insurance. The previous rules where some workers may not have been covered are actually now eligible. This COVID unemployment, some of the highlights of it are that the unemployment extension, as she said, was for, was it happened in March. And this CARES Act now gives the states the option of extending their compensation to individual contractors as well, and those generally ineligible for benefits. You would apply for these just like you would unemployment through your state's unemployment insurance program. And in this case, you can be unemployed through no fault of your own. For example, you've been separated from your last job due to a lack of available work. In other words, they're not able to keep you employed. Also, you need to meet some work and wage requirements, though. So your state's going to decide the requirements for the income earned and over what time period that is. But it seems like in general, they might request you to have the first four out of five months work. So this is, again, for people that are affected by COVID. There could be other additional state requirements. So be sure and check at your state website. The COVID extension, though, is an unemployment that's going to allow you to stay on unemployment for an additional 13 weeks of benefits, which means that you're, you could earn over those 13 weeks an additional $8,400. If you're receiving benefits, if your job opens again, then you need to start back at your job if it's something that's safe for you to do and you feel comfortable with it. But if you just don't want to start back to work, you are no longer eligible for these benefits. However, if your office or work asks you to come in and then for some reason has to let you go again, you're still able to reapply for it and you can earn up to 39 weeks, which is about 10 months of unemployment this way. So just to kind of piggyback on whether your job calls you back to work or not, just be aware that during this time, if your job does call you back to work and you decide you don't want those hours because kind of rather be on unemployment or, you know, whatever the case is, they are required to report the fact that they offered you hours and you turn them down. So be very careful about making this kind of choice. There's a federal pandemic unemployment compensation program, and it's the FPUC for short. This is a program that was put into place with part of the stimulus package. It makes the people who are currently eligible for unemployment also eligible for an additional $600. Now, this is federal benefits, so it's actually separate from your state. And as of right now, which is mid-May, Things are literally changing on a day by day basis. So as of right this second, this is due to expire July 31st, on or before July 31st. While this is a temporary thing, just be aware that it may get extended or it may not. So don't depend on this extra $600. And again, I reiterate, if, if you've been offered hours by your job, you need to take those hours. And it's $600 a week. So that comes out to $2,400 a month. It's not it's not a monthly thing. It's, a, it's every week you can earn that $600. So you automatically get this as you're getting your state unemployment. And I do know of a particular case where their state unemployment had just ended. They did not qualify for an extension for their personal, you know, for a personal reason of their own. But they actually started getting the six hundred dollars, which was you know, kind of nice for this particular person. Again, you need to go on your state website to to see what eligibility requirements you might have and just know that there's no special application that you need to submit 
to get this FPUC unemployment money. But if you are not getting state money for whatever reason, then you do need to apply for that compensation. There's also something called the PUA, which is Pandemic Unemployment Assistance. And this was interesting to me. I did not know this. But if you're the primary caregiver to children while they're at home due to school closures, and so then you cannot perform your job, even if it means you can't perform it in your home remotely, then you are also eligible for this money. You just need to apply for it. And you're going to have to let them know that that you're here because you're a primary caregiver. But it does not... Uh, allow if you do have the opportunity to telework somewhere else in your house, or if your child is older and they're able to care for themselves, then you're not likely to qualify for this. And it also then kind of understandably does not apply to when school is out. So in other words, if your school ended on June 18, then those benefits would not last past that. So if it's if, it, if school's out for some reason, you're not going to get the benefits. So what if you have a problem? Um, You have a specific question you want to ask. You have an issue with your benefits. You think you should be getting more, you know, whatever the case is. Normally, you'd go on your state's website or or you, you know, you'd call them. Right now, the state websites can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot of information and it keeps, like I said before, it keeps changing. So you want to go through those frequently asked questions. You want to go through the link that specifies CARES Act or pandemic. Any of those key words is where you really want to go to see what is specific to now, you know, to this particular time. Of course, they're asking that you have patience if you try calling. You may be on hold for a couple of hours. I do know of, again, some people who have waited those hours, got through to somebody only to be told to check the website Um, and they were not able to get answers to their questions. Again, this is a very frustrating time. I know it's no consolation to say you're not the only one, but you're not the only one. There's actually a helpful hint that I came across, which is that if you're having issues with the website on your computer, you should actually try your phone. It seems that sometimes the phones have faster internet connections and you might actually be able to connect in that way. Definitely are some states that are having major issues with their websites. I know Florida at this time is one of those states. So there definitely are people that I've just seen, you know, just in watching the news that it's been six weeks or so and still haven't been able to either get their first play- payment or even get their application through. So again, this, you know, and again, no consolation, but you're not the only one. If you, you have trouble completing your application, go through those frequently asked questions on the websites, go through those special sections on the websites. But I also have seen there are some unemployment insurance employees that have been on local town websites answering questions. So it might be helpful if you went on one of those, you know, maybe like a Facebook group or an Instagram group for your town, for your state, and you might actually have someone that might be able to answer your general question. I Again, I, I mean, I know a lot of people, unfortunately, have been affected by it. I've been blessed that I haven't been, but I had a friend that actually had somebody inbox them on Facebook and worked for unemployment and was able to answer her specific question, which was really nice. Well, that's, that's great information. Again, with general unemployment, you have to provide proof to the state that you are actively looking for work. In this particular case, you do not. You do not need to provide them any information and they're uh, under the assumption that you're not looking for work and that that is okay at this point. But when you apply, I love the frequently asked questions that Norma suggested. Make sure you look at what kind of documents you're going to need because you do not want to get on there and find out that that you don't have what you need to apply for this. So just make sure you have whatever documents you need and then be ready for approximately two to three weeks before you get your benefits. So those stimulus checks that we talked about a little bit earlier, if you're earning $75,000 or less, you're going to get $1,200 and you get $500 per child. If you earn more than $99,000, you're not going to see a benefit check. And Social Security recipients will also receive those benefit checks. Now, the reason I'm mentioning it is that you will not have to pay taxes on those stimulus payments. So be aware that when you receive that money, they're going to consider it not as income, but as a prepaid tax credit on next year's returns. So for the taxes that you owe for next year, they're going to assume that this is part of what you've got back, quote unquote. 
So these are advances on the taxes that you'll owe next year. Remember that if you are single and your income is less than $75,000, married filing jointly less than $150,000, or head of household less than $12,500, you're going to see that full benefit. But as your salary increases, it's going to be phased out. So if you're single making more than $99,000, married filing jointly, making more than 198,000 together or head of household making more than 136,500 then it's going to be phased out but so somewhere between the 1200 and then it phases out based on your income if your income drops this year though you might see a larger tax refund because again they realize that it's a possibility that you were affected by covid these refunds though will not negatively affect your taxes. They may just not affect your taxes at all. So it will either be a benefit to your taxes or you don't see an impact from it at all. Basically, what will happen is it's that it's a credit against what you will get when you file your taxes next year. So let's just say for whatever reason, you didn't get this money. It's actually going to be a line item on your credit next year. It'll actually be a line item on your taxes next year. So there may be a question there when you file your taxes next year that'll say, did you get your stimulus refund in 2019? And then you click yes. Um, I imagine that's how it's going to be. I remember there was a some kind of refund years past where that was the case. And they asked you, did you get it? And you just say yes. And then they then you don't get it again, obviously. So generally what this is, is since it's not ordinary income for you, you're getting this tax credit, as Norma just said, but they're giving you your tax credit early. Instead of having to wait until 2020, you're getting your tax credit early. Conversely, and big exclamation point here, the $600 a week that you're getting from the federal government on top of your state unemployment is considered income and you are going to be taxed on that. It is included in your, it will be included in your gross income next year, and you'll be taxed at your ordinary tax rate on that. So whatever your tax rate generally is. So you're going to receive a 1099 G in January for tax purposes, and then you can make the arrangements for your tax. Now, if you want to get the taxes taken out of this $2,400 a month, the $600 a week, you can do a couple things. You can fill out a W-4 form with your state government and have them take out the percentage that you think you're going to be taxed on at your ordinary rate, and they'll take it out just like they do regular unemployment. You could also start making quarterly payments on the money you receive now. So if you're already somebody making quarterly payments on your taxes, you might want to include it in that so that you're not getting a bigger tax bill next year. And finally, you could say to yourself, well, what your ordinary tax rate is, is it somewhere between 10 and 20%? And you could start to just withhold that yourself, put it in an account somewhere so that once taxes come due next April, you'll have it. So if you're earning $2,400 a month, you're going to want to pull out anywhere from 10 to 20, so $240 to $480 a month and put that aside, being aware that you might have to pay taxes on that. And also keep in mind that for now, that's actually just been one payment that's been made for us as far as the stimulus package. There's actually a second round that's a potential at this particular moment. Again, you know, we're recording this in mid-May, but it has recently passed the House and it's waiting to pass the Senate. I'm sure by the time it passes the Senate, you know, it'll be quite changed from the original bill that's been submitted. But the fact of the matter is that hopefully there's a second round of stimulus coming through for those who need it. So another program that's available or that has recently become available is the Paycheck Protection Program Loan. This is a loan that, again, part of the stimulus is provided by the Small Business Association. There's been a lot of controversy on how this ended up being used or how certain companies applied for it and received benefits that probably shouldn't have because it really didn't meet the heart of what this program was created for. The program was created, again, for small businesses. Hence, it was, you know, it's being distributed by the Small Business Association. And it was designed so that it provide just a kind of incentive for small businesses to be able to maintain employees on their payroll during this time where let's just say you've got a restaurant and you're not getting a lot of customers in right now, but you want to stay open. You want to continue doing delivery or curbside pickup and you want to be able to pay those employees, even though you're not making the wages or, you know, the income that you're, you're used to making. That's pretty much what this was designed for. And the nice thing about this is that the Small Business Association 
Association will actually be forgiving loans if the employees are kept on the payroll for eight weeks and the money is used for payroll, rent, mortgage interest, or utilities. You're able to apply for these loans through an existing SBA 7A lender or a federally insured depository institution, federally insured credit union, a farm credit system institution, any of those that are participating. So the ones that are able to apply is any small business that meets the SBA size standards, any business that's a nonprofit, that's a veterans association or tribal business. You can apply as a sole proprietor, an independent contractor, a self-employed person to be able to get that loan forgiveness. So again, as I stated before, fully forgiven if the funds are used for payroll costs, interest on mortgage, rent, utilities, no collateral or personal guarantees are required. The loan payments are also deferred for six months and neither the government nor the lenders will charge businesses any fees for this particular loan. The other great part about it is that if for whatever reason you're not using the loan for these particular reasons, it has a maturity of two years and an interest rate of only 1%. Again, I have read quite a bit about these loans. Some of them, I want to say that initially the applications closed very quickly. I want to say that businesses that this really wasn't intended for were able to get funds, but they have since been returned. And hopefully there'll be another round where you can apply for these and be able to qualify at this amazing rate of 1%. You know, you mentioned self-employed and that they also are eligible now to receive unemployment, which is traditionally not the case. And the reason for that is because they don't meet the requirements of being let go. If you are self-employed, you can't let yourself go due to not fulfilling your requirements. But it is based on your location and the benefit guidelines of your states. And currently, the minimum is about 50% of your average weekly payroll is what your benefit would be. You do also qualify for the 600 PUA, the uh, pandemic unemployment assistance. You can get the extra weeks, so 26 weeks plus the additional 13 weeks to come up with that 39 weeks of about 10 months of eligibility. And you do also file with state unemployment. So why is it that self-employed people aren't able to get unemployment generally? It's because self-employed people are not paying into the unemployment program of the um, state. And because they're not paying into it, they're not supposed to take money back out of it. And it's also true for 1099 employees because you're not paying into that system. You generally would not get money back out of the system, but they're making an exception during this time to make sure that everybody is getting some money back. I just want to circle back. And as far as the funds having run out and all that, my suggestion to all, whether it comes to the SBA, whether it comes to unemployment, information, as I stated, is changing on a day to day basis. What is available to all is changing on a day to day basis. What you're able to do is changing. I know, for example, I had just checked uh, I was paying a credit card and I had no balance. I just happened to notice that I didn't see the little thing on the right where it said balance transfer offers. There's always a balance transfer offer on my specific, you know, one of my specific accounts. And I, I was actually like, well, that's actually weird because I always see it on the right. And when I clicked on offers, it said none available. So I actually checked a few other credit cards. Absolutely none of my accounts have balance transfer offers available right now. But on the plus side, if you go pay your credit card, there's a big red flag on the top where it actually says, if you need help, click here. I have a friend actually that I communicate with often that went to pay her minimum payment or make her payment on her credit card. And she couldn't figure out what to pay because I didn't want her to pay right now. They were actually not letting her pay right now. And she was thinking, you know, she's like, no, I, I want to pay. Like, what, what's my payment? Like, I actually want to pay. And I said, well, download your statement. I'm sure it's on there somewhere. But she actually spent a good five minutes trying to figure out what she actually should pay on that credit card because they were, you know, nice enough to say you don't have to pay anything. I, I had a credit card, as a matter of fact, that I went to make a payment on and it said no payment due. And I knew that there was a payment due. So, you know, I downloaded my statement, I made my payment and I left it at that. There is help available. Take advantage of what you need, but also take advantage of what you don't need. And what I mean by that is if you, you know, if you're blessed to have continued employment right now and not reduced your, you know, salary or anything like that, that, you know, some companies are doing, 
and you've got that money, continue to pay down your debt if that's what your goal is, or continue to fund your emergency fund during this time. Do something with that extra money or that money that you're seeing right now and take advantage of what these companies are willing to do for you right now if you need it. And also take advantage of the fact that you don't need to make payments on your federally held student loan until September after September 30th and no interest will accrue. So if you need to take advantage of that, you could use that. Thanks for listening to Finances and Unemployment during COVID-19. We know you chose to listen today and we're grateful. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, share, and review. It helps us get listeners and it makes it easier for others to find us. And finally, it helps us spread the word about financial literacy. Please let us know what you think on Facebook or by going to our website at financesand.net. Finances and does not provide legal or tax advice, and nothing in this podcast is to be construed as such. Always consult a tax, accounting, or legal professional for advice on your specific situation. Remember, we went to school, so you don't have to. 